Hey guys, it's Brandon here again, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the link between bipolar disorder and spirituality, and also how you can begin to heal parts of your bipolar disorder by beginning spiritual practice and by learning more about spirituality, religion, however you want to talk about it and call it. Uh, there are many words that are interchangeable uh, here. I'm going to be talking about God, and I'm going to be talking about consciousness and other things like that. Uh, just keep in mind that there are many different ways to understand uh, religion or spirituality. Literally, there are hundreds and thousands, maybe tens of thousands, I don't know, world religions out there that people use uh, as an aspect to make their lives better and to connect them to um, the divine in some way or another. And I also recognize, too, that a lot of people watching this might think that religion or spirituality are bullshit or there's not enough proof. And uh, I totally understand that perspective too because uh, for my teenage years and uh, leading into early adulthood, I was atheist and agnostic. And until I really gained a better philosophical understanding of what God is, what uh, consciousness is, uh, and just really started to understand all of this uh, and how how all these different world religions interrelate and how, how the truth can be seen at so many different perspectives um, until I started to really get a handle on that stuff and do also a lot of uh, work and, and meditation and, and just learning myself I was uh, an atheist for years and an agnostic for years too so um, anyway with that bit of introduction let's go ahead and just get into things so uh, one of the reasons why I'm making this video right now is because um, earlier this week I had what I previously would have called a manic, like kind of manic feelings, um, you know, and I'm not calling it a manic episode because I w was able to stay grounded and um, process it in a healthy way that I think actually is going to help me in the future. And the great thing about this is I'm not the only one who's saying this. Um, actually, uh, there, there are a few different sources. So uh, Dr. Stan Groff, I think uh, back, um, maybe it was like 1950s or something, around, around that time, uh, I think he made a book uh, on spiritual emergencies um, or like a spiritual crisis. Uh, and if you read into that book. I, I, I haven't read the entire book myself. I've kind of understand understood the, the concept of it. Um, he basically describes um, a lot of similar things that happen with, for people in bipolar disorder, um, but from a different perspective. And uh, I actually heard about this book first from uh, a YouTube channel that is called Bipolar or Waking Up. And if you spent much time as a bipolar person on YouTube, you've probably stumbled across it here or there. Um, and uh, in this video, I'm really going to go into why um, seeing the world and, and elevating through different levels of consciousness uh, is going to be helpful to improving your bipolar disorder. And uh, in all of this, um, when it comes to uh, experience well, growing in your level of consciousness, coming to a higher level of consciousness, um, it's naturally going to help your bipolar disorder. There might be some uh, traps and pitfalls along the way, but uh, ultimately, uh, if you are willing to do the work and do the research um, and do some meditation and other practices, uh, you will find that it will help. Um, so anyway, um, on this channel, Bipolar or Waking Up, he basically describes uh, the model of spiral dynamics and uh, also the, the impacts that Kim, Ken Wilber, sorry if I can talk, uh, made um, on that model as well uh, to talk about levels of consciousness. This sounds probably to a lot of you like an odd thing to say, like for one, you know, what exactly is consciousness? And what are levels of consciousness? So let's go over that real quickly. Consciousness is 
uh, as a word, it's basically, you can almost replace it with experience. It's, it's basically describing this experience we're having right now, you know, all of the physical things in your room and your thoughts and all of that, you're conscious of these things. Um, and consciousness is, you also can kind of be used interchangeably with the word awareness. Uh, so one way you can uh, conceive of it, it or think about it is as you start to understand more and experience more of reality, more of this world, um, and uh, really to gain more knowledge, your level of consciousness will go up. And um, at the beginning levels of consciousness, you have like, you know, what you might see in maybe like Native American tribes or older kind of, you know, really just older civilizations and stuff. You know, they didn't have quite as much knowledge. They saw things in, in a bit of a different way and, and they interpret a lot of their spiritual phenomenon and, and phenomena, or sorry, phenomena and things that they saw uh, in a spiritual way. They interpreted this stuff in a very concrete way. They thought that, uh, you know, magic and stuff like that had physical effects and and um, what we're starting to see is that, you know, as you move into higher states of, or higher levels of consciousness, sorry, um, higher levels of consciousness, you get to like modern civilization, what we're at now. Um, and then you start to see like, um, it went from like tribes and shamans and stuff to, you know, fundamentalist religions uh, like Christianity, some of the early Christians, um, Muslims, stuff like that. Uh, and then like today, like in, you know, modern kind of first world countries like the United States or United Kingdom or, you know, there, there are plenty of countries, insert first world country here kind of thing. Any of these first world countries, um, you know, they, they're, they're pretty much at what in the, the model of spiral dynamics is called an orange state of consciousness or sorry, an orange level of consciousness. This orange level of consciousness, um, some of the main things that are in it are materialist science. So the, th the belief that everything, you know, can be explained um, by science, you know, pricking and prodding in, in the physical world. Um, and, and it's kind of the thought like that, that our thoughts and emotions and also our consciousness arises through the brain and neurons and stuff firing. And the problem with this model is that there isn't yet any solid proof or evidence that consciousness it derives from the brain. There, there's just simply not the strong evidence of that. Um, and now like materialists, people or, or like atheists or agnostics who haven't really actually done that much research, uh, they actually believe this on essentially what is blind faith. This is what's known as the hard problem of consciousness. You can look it up. Um, and now you start to think to yourself, well, an atheist believing in faith or an agnostic believing in faith, you know, no, that's not real. Well, you know, these there are many people that you're going to come into contact in your daily life who, um, no matter what level of consciousness they're on, you know, there's always a level of faith in any human belief system. Um, you know, the, the, the only possibility of getting beyond that is when you get to, you know, some of the really advanced, uh, spiritual enlightenment and stuff like that. Um, where you're no longer having thoughts and yeah, anyway, that stuff is very advanced. I don't expect you guys to get a ton out of it in this video. If you're very interested, if that sounds like a cool thing, look into spiritual enlightenment. There are plenty and plenty of resources out there. And if you're really interested in what resources I have found helpful, you can ask me in the comments and uh, I'll give you some. Anyway, um, so now, you know, we're, we're moving along, chugging along, we're understanding what levels of consciousness are. So what comes after this materialist thing? You know, because we found in the earlier levels of consciousness, like fundamentalist religion, that, you know, this idea of God is like this bearded man in the sky who judges every one of my actions. And then at the end of life, I'm, 
you know, sent to this physical plane of heaven or hell, um, that's not really a, a convenient thing anymore once you get to a higher level of consciousness. And you'll see as people evolve through levels of consciousness, they eventually lose this notion and that's what happens in our materialist scientific paradigm. We understand that that conception of God is complete bullshit, to be honest. Um, but the, the theists, the fundamentalist theists were right in one thing, and it's a pretty important thing, and that is that God is real, okay? But they were wrong in, like, pretty much everything else. Like, I mean, they got so many good things right about God, but there were just so many traps that they fell into. And we don't blame them because they were operating very well for where they were at. You know, they didn't have modern scientific advancements. They didn't have technology. They didn't have um, great infrastructure in their countries to give them comfortable lives so they could work through mental illnesses, all this stuff. I mean, there, there's so much knowledge, though, that was given to us by these very ancient uh, societies. And uh, one thing also, too, to keep in mind is that um, some more advanced ideas and conceptions of what God is have existed for thousands of years. Um, when I say level of consciousness, I'm really talking about a cultural thing. It's a cultural level of consciousness. Now, each individual has a level of consciousness too. Um, but what you have to understand is, yeah, some of these like yogis and mystics and saints, you know, thousands of years ago might have had really high level understandings of spirituality, God, and that, and the nature of that. Um, but the general population had no fucking clue of what God really was. They took things very literally. They followed on blind faith. Again, the problem we were running into when we're believing that the, the consciousness comes from the brain, we're just going to believe on blind faith um, You know, when the scientists can't really prove exactly what's going on. And they're just like, just give us, you know, five more years. We'll, we'll show it to you. Um, you know, that's the same problem they were running into with fundamentalist religions that made the scientific materialists go to become atheists or agnostics. The proof wasn't there. Um, so anyway, uh, now we're, we're moving up the chain. We're, we're coming on to higher levels of consciousness beyond the what is known as stage orange in spiral dynamics. Now we're moving into stage green of spiral dynamics. This stage, um, spirituality starts to become a common word, a focus, um, and it, it starts to become like your hippies and using psychedelics and all this stuff. And there's a lot of value in that level of consciousness, but um, really what's to be understood is that, you, yes, that one is good, but you don't really get to start seeing the, the true healing capabilities of um, spirituality on a mental illness until you yourself develop to what I would say is close to stage yellow or very high stage green in spiral dynamics. And um, what stage yellow is all about um, is being able to understand that there are multiple perspectives on many different topics uh, in life. And one of those topics, which is a very important one, is spirituality. And, you know, you might think to yourself, you're like, you know, I'm taking my medication, I'm, I'm trying to hold a job, and it's stressful, and I hate it, and I have bipolar disorder or another mental illness, and I'm just, like, really struggling with this. You know, how, how is getting a higher level of consciousness going to help? And what it'll help with is it'll actually get it to where you can really change the entire context that you're understanding this mental illness within. At the normal orange level of consciousness that I've talked about a little bit, you know, leading up to this, um, there's the belief that, you know, consciousness comes from the brain. There's a belief that the, the solution to mental illness are really all of it comes from, from physical processes in the brain. 
Um, and this isn't to say that that is that that there isn't that there aren't physical processes or that there aren't ge genetics in play, but what it's to say is um, spirituality is going to give you some very powerful tools if you'll stick with me for actually uh, integrating a lot of the experiences you've had with your um, bipolar disorder uh, episodes. So one of the biggest things um, with bipolar episodes is you're, you're going to run into psychological problems. I mean, it is a psychological illness, um, you know, according to the, the stage orange way of looking at things. Um, and like I said, there's a lot of value in this. But the problem comes that if I'm taking medication for life and it's a, it's a, it's a diagnosis that I'm stuck with for life and there's, there's no healing or anything, that kind of sucks, doesn't it? Um, and it's a pretty disheartening reality. Um, and once you you start to go beyond the, the normal paradigm of, of looking at this as only a, a physical or, or brain process problem, uh, you can see that once you start to elevate your own level of consciousness, you'll start to experience kind of the power of now level of consciousness, the or like, you know, those states or that kind of spirituality. Uh, Eckhart Tolle or Eckhart, Eckhart Tolle, I'm, I forget the correct pronunciation for his name. Um, that's a book that he wrote um, that really describes how uh, he, through his own mental illness, recognized that um, he had an epiphany. There was the thought, um, he thought um, basically that he, uh, I'm unhappy, you know, I can't stop my thoughts. And then at that moment, he had a sudden enlightenment come upon him. And why did that happen? It happened because he said the sentence, uh, and this isn't a direct quote, but it's basically, you know, the, the, the gist of the idea is here. I can't stop my thoughts. Who is the I then? W what is this I that can't stop the thoughts? If the I can't really control the thoughts, it kind of is starting to seem like the I, uh, the subject here in this sentence, is separate from the thoughts. And that's the realization that he had, um, that he was rather the observer of the thoughts, that consciousness behind this whole experience that we're having. It's the consciousness behind this experience um you, you know literally like i'm looking at my hand right now i'm i'm touching my hand i'm talking to you i'm i'm having these thoughts or you know these ideas are coming through me um and i'm talking to my camera because i'm trying to talk to you over the internet and all these ideas all of this happens within consciousness and the beauty of this idea is that like I said, for thousands of years, this has been known in, in different religions and um, spiritual faiths. Um, some of the key ones that really understood this part of God or this, this way of seeing God uh, are Buddhism and Hinduism. And now um, you might have your own thoughts or beliefs on Buddhism and Hinduism. Um, because uh, there are some more fundam fundamentalist Buddhists or Hindus who also take things li literally. Um, I've noticed it's less of an issue. There, there's more nuance there in those faiths um, that can kind of allow someone to uh, in the world that it becomes secular, a secular world that, that doesn't always like religion. Um, you as an individual uh, you know, operating at that level of consciousness can look to these faiths and, and even if you're skeptical, you can begin to start to philosophically understand, wait a minute, you know, if consciousness is the thing that everything's coming from, you know, is the, the physical explanation of reality, is this this physical, me looking at my hand right now, is this everything? And you start to have that understanding the more and more that you look into this that no, it's not. And quickly, I want to say for a lot of people 
um, watching this, you might be Christian or um, a, another faith, and uh, you might kind of reject the thought that Buddhism or Hinduism have insights that are somehow above Christianity. And I want to stop you there because that's not what I'm saying. Uh, what I'm saying is that um, Buddhism and Hinduism are very helpful to the Western mind because we've become very skeptical and we want to see the proof. And um, the convenient thing is because these religions are focused on that primary realization that consciousness is everything and that that is the nature of God and everything derives through that. Um, it, it, it can fit with Christianity as well. And I think ultimately um, I, there are also, what, what I'm talking about here is the idea of non-duality, non-dual spiritual enlightenment. And there are also Christian non-dualists. This isn't a, a, a way of thinking, ideology, or spiritual path that's in any way, that, that doesn't have to, to fight with Christianity. It doesn't have to fight with Islam. It doesn't have to fight with anything. Non-duality is something that you can verify for yourself. That's the power that non-duality holds. That's the power that that way of looking at spirituality holds. So anyway, I've, I've brought us on this long, now 21 minute journey to kind of understand just a few things about levels of consciousness. You know, what am I doing here? Like you're probably sitting there and if you've enjoyed watching it at this point, I'm glad that you have. Give me a like if you're at least entertained or you find it helpful, but you know, we're now getting into the meat of this subject. How is you realizing that you are consciousness and not a human body mind thinking thing? How is that going to cure you? Well, for one, it's going to, to slowly, slowly, the more that you start to realize this, the more that you start to meditate, um, do other practices uh, that can bring you into this state. I have talked about using psychedelics in the past. Um, uh, for me with my own bipolar disorder, um, I would not suggest that until you're pretty far down the path of, um, you know, meditation and, and understanding on a philosophical level about non-duality. Even then, I'm not suggesting it. Um, this is something, um, if it really feels right to you and you've, if you've done a lot of work to, to, to try to raise your level of consciousness, uh, you're very open-minded, um, and, and you've understood. You've probably been studying spirituality, spiritual enlightenment, um, in kind of a, a almost a secular way. I would suggest would probably be helpful for probably a couple years, unless you're doing all of those things. I would say pump the brakes on the idea of doing psychedelics if you have bipolar disorder or other mental illnesses. Um, now they're doing research in many top universities into psychedelics. I'm just taking a quick tangent here. Um, and they're finding very good results, but um, the, the researchers have been very hesitant to do, they actually, as far as I know, have not done any research on using psychedelics to treat bipolar disorder or schizophrenia. I think this mainly comes because uh, the people who are doing this research don't have a, a giant understanding of um, this model of conceiving mental illness uh, to where it, this this is operating on different levels of consciousness. Um, but anyway, so you know, like I said, meditation. Um, I personally use psychedelics was very helpful and is one of the things that was helpful for me managing. Um, some of those, you know, similar to manic type energy symptoms that I was having earlier this week. It was through that experience, um, you know, I was able to process things. But anyway, so, you know, we're, we're, we're off the psychedelic topic for now. We're moving on to understand this level of consciousness. So, when I, I've talked about enlightenment, all that stuff, I've laid a little bit of groundwork, but now we need to understand the difference. So 
Uh, Dr. Stan Groff, like I mentioned before, talked about a spiritual awakening, spiritual crisis. Um, or well, he said spiritual emergency. Uh, what I'm going to say is a spiritual awakening. Um, on the channel Bipolar uh, or Waking Up um, that you can look up on YouTube, it will probably be very helpful for you uh, if you've been watching the video to this point. I would suggest you to go watch his videos. Uh, but anyway, he describes that um, spiritual awakenings, bipolar disorder, and schizophrenia are all essentially the same phenomenon but they're, it's happening on a continuum. And what determines where you fall on this continuum is your level of consciousness and your level of trauma. So those two things, those are the key factors. So as you raise your level of consciousness, you're going to have a chance to start to experience this mental illness in a different way. And what it's essentially going to start to come into, um, from what I've experienced in my own personal, you know, experience of the disorder, um, like what I was describing, you know, I've, I've been, you know, doing, having a bit of an experience this past week, but you can see how grounded I am now. Um, with all of this, you, you have to just keep in mind that as your level of consciousness is going to go up, you're going to begin um, having the tools at, at your feet to, to start handling this mental illness in a healthier way. Um, because you can start to look at it as, you know, this isn't just, you know, I'm stuck with a, a mental health disorder for the rest of my life that forever needs medication. I'm not saying get off your medication. Um, medication is very helpful for stabilizing people who are still in that bipolar disorder and schizophrenia uh, level of consciousness and level of trauma. As you move up levels of consciousness, being a person who has a mental health disorder, um, specifically if you're someone with bipolar disorder, I've gone through this myself, I've heard the talks of, of people who have had the same thing happen. As you go up in your level of consciousness, you're going to process a lot of trauma. That's one thing that comes out in your episodes. Uh, primarily in your manic episodes and you're gonna realize um, I don't know how much it's happened for you individually but um, it's a common theme of there's a common theme of some type of spiritual feeling some type of feeling that I'm Jesus or I'm a saint or something like that or I'm reborn uh, for some people with bipolar disorder and this is the, the more positive the experience is uh, according to uh, the, the gentleman who created Bipolar Waking Up, that YouTube channel. Um, and, you know, of course, you know, it's not just some guy on YouTube. He, he has the research uh, behind it if you go watch that. Uh, like I mentioned, the, the Dr. Stan Groff um, book on spiritual crisis and, and spiritual emergencies, also Spiral Dynamics. He, he really breaks it down in a great way. But um, we're moving past that, okay? To, to see that as you move up in level of consciousness, you're going to process traumas in your manic episodes. You're, you were processing traumas in your manic episodes beforehand. I personally believe that, um, and I've seen in my own experience, my manic episodes keep coming back to key traumas in my life. And when you are in a higher level of consciousness, you can actually appreciate the experience appreciate the trauma, realize psychologically why it might be helpful to you, um, but then not get caught up in thinking that it's something real out there, you know, because uh, at a fundamental level, like once you start to understand um, levels of consciousness um, and spirituality and non-duality, you start to realize that there, there is just consciousness. There's just consciousness and what it is created. The Hindu uh, way of, of talking about this is there is just Brahman and, uh, you know, Maya, things happening within Brahman. Um, and of course, I'm not um, an expert on Hinduism. I have been very interested in it re re lately, and uh, it has actually been one thing that's very much helped my uh, philosophical understanding of God. Um, and I'm sure it will help you if you look into it um, once you're ready to. 
Um, but yeah, so I, I've laid a, a lot of foundation here and I've talked about how um, moving up this, this, this kind of scale of consciousness and it, it, it will help you. But now let's get into the nitty gritty. How does having a spiritual life in any way or form help you? How has it helped me this week? I'll give you that, a concrete example. How has it helped me this week? Uh, spirituality has common themes of service to others. It has common themes of not working for the material world or for material gain or for material pleasures. Um, all of these things will help you tremendous, tremendously in bipolar disorder. As you start to do practices, exp um, working on developing a pure consciousness um, and that experience within yourself, like meditation or um, some of the more traditional forms of yoga, not like the stretching yoga and that's popular in you know Western countries like the United States right now. Um, if we're talking about real like you know yoga that's been done for for thousands of years, like bhakti yoga. Um, yana yoga and uh, karma yoga those are three that I've come to understand in this week and what they what it, this has done for me is it has um, and also listening to the Bhagavad Gita which is one of the foundational Hindu texts um, and, and keep in mind um, whatever your your normal faith is before you start watching this video if it's Christianity I'm sure you can find the same spiritual truth if you read the Bible or, or whatever your holy text is there's going to be the truth there because any religion is talking about this this fundamental truth that that consciousness is creating all of this they just have it in different languages they happen in different cultures um, keep that in mind so um, how did did all this work like I I've been doing service to others I've been literally trying to, to serve others in the name of God or Krishna or Jesus Christ um, and it's helpful to use these these words um, and you know I'm not an expert 100% in the spirituality but this is one thing that I, I learned about in a talk from Advaita and well it was from a, a woman who's a teacher of Advaita Vedanta which is uh, you can just think of it as a sect of Hinduism um, but it's a very advanced sect of Hinduism that is deeply in um, you know built upon the idea of non-duality and so she's describing that yes existence is consciousness it's brahman essentially which brahman uh in, in hindu they, they like to use the the term sat chit ananda sat is existence consciousness is chit ananda is bliss so they're saying brahman or, or your, the the true nature the uh, god that creates everything and everything happens within this consciousness um it's a it's existence consciousness and bliss that's what that's what you really are but um, what she's saying is that with bhakti yoga uh, this is devotion to a deity and that's goes back to what I was saying just a minute ago about um, using names and having faith um, in Jesus Christ or in Lord Krishna or in you know whatever God or in you know Muhammad or you know Allah, whatever works for you in your culture, using that is very key. I actually went back to the first church that I went to when I was growing up today. It, I was raised Mormon, uh, which is a, a sect of Christianity. Um, and as a kid, I didn't understand it, and I thought that it was bullshit, and I thought that it was stupid that I couldn't drink coffee. I thought that, you know, none of it made sense, and, you know, God's not real. You know, once I got to my teenage years I thought you know God's not real fuck him if you you know I can't drink a coffee because <laughs> it's a gist of, of just kind of how those feelings went okay so um, you know I went through all that and like now I, I went back there and I real and I could see with this higher level understanding of spirituality that these people in this building are all just spiritual seekers trying to transcend suffering 
in their own way and and we all have our own problems shortcomings and we all have our gifts in this physical you know body mind a reality that we're, we're processing things in but um you know so I, I was just seeing it through this different lens that these are just spiritual seekers too trying to to find god in their own way and they actually had a lot of beautiful things to say and I actually picked up a lot of negative ideas about spirituality and religion as a young child when I didn't understand non-duality. And that's the problem is, you know, with, with the, the stage orange, you know, modern level of consciousness that thinks that everything can be described in a scientific and materialistic way, um, it's very easy as, as a kid coming up in a culture that's at that level of consciousness to say, you know, this is bullshit. You know, where's God? I don't see him. You can't measure him. Um, and one of the beautiful things that I've heard um, from Swami Sarva Priyananda, who is one of my favorite people to listen to in uh, the Advaita Vedanta uh, sect of Hinduism or, or you know, kind of you know, little corner of Hinduism. I don't know if you technically call it a sect, but we can call it here. You know, that's essentially the idea. So, um, he says, and, and it's a it's a great idea that, and I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but he says, so sorry, I got it back. So I'm back on my train of thought. Um, Swami Sarva Priyananda explains that there is proof for God and the proof is in the enlightened person. There have been a host of enlightened people throughout human history and these are the only people, the only class, the only group of people to ever solve the problem of human suffering. These are people who some of them are, are rumored to have been able to just sit there and meditate in pure bliss and recognition of the divine to the extent that they could just be sitting there and have a face full of mosquitoes you know poking into their skin and they're just so entrenched in that divine bliss that comes through a a first-hand recognition that you are consciousness consciousness alone essentially um, and that this is just a mere plaything, this physical body mind with thoughts. When someone's truly entrenched in that, and I felt that to an extent, you know, I'm not to that level yet, but I've felt many tastes of enlightenment um, in various ways. And I'm even feeling it now. I'm very, very much in the present moment while making this video. Um, while someone's doing that, you can tell they're not a normal person. How easy do you think it is for 99.9999% of people to, to go out and, and sit still in bliss and just be happy while mosquitoes are eating at their face because they know that physical reality is not the truth of things. He might, I mean, that's, that's, that's literally what's happening here. That's literally the possibility that you one day could get to if you really worked hard on the path towards non-duality. Um, but yeah, uh, I would say one of the key things is um, meditation. It's been so helpful to me. Um, but yeah, so I talked about bhakti yoga. That's the faith part. Uh, yana yoga, spelled J-N-A-N-A, -A, is uh, kind of the, the yoga or the, the... In yoga, you can kind of think, you know, it's like I said, it's not this like stretching Western, you know, bastardized sins of yoga. It's, um, yoga is, you can think of it as just, it's just a path to get there. So this is one path, one tool, you know, at your disposal to, to, to reach this infinite state, um, of recognizing yourself as consciousness, um, at, at the most fundamental level. Uh, so yana yoga is this knowledge, this 
philosophical and, and knowledgeable understanding of the divine. Um, and this is kind of an impersonal route. And, and um, like I said, it's helpful to, to understand bhakti yoga or to be devoted to a deity because um, when you're seeing God in a personified way um, or, or thinking about it in like human qualities, it helps you to develop a love for this experience of the divine, this experience of consciousness. It, it develops you spiritually and it can help to purify you. So that's why faith is so important. It's really, you know, even if you're a scientific materialist, you're so thoroughly entrenched in faith. Um, the difference here is you're you're starting to to put faith towards something that will actually work in a positive way for you. Um, and not to say that scientific materialism doesn't do many great things, but I'm saying work to uh, this is going to work to the existential level. Okay, this is going to be great. <laughs> so anyway, bhakti yana yoga. I've given a brief description there, uh, and now um, karma yoga. So how you can think about karma yoga is karma yoga is um, it's basically uh, acting in a kind way, acting in, uh, in alignment with your heart or like what you feel to be morally right in the moment. Um, another way you could describe it is, is trying your best to act through love and not fear. Um, and one of the great things that karma yoga can do is it can help along with bhakti yoga to really open up your heart chakra. Um, your heart, uh, what I've been told by um, a teacher who I have who's been meditating for 49 years now and has been a psychologist for about 40, I would guess, uh, he was telling me um, that the heart has a very powerful uh, ability to be a grounding tool, that heart chakra. And when you're, you're acting in accordance with your moral um, feelings, your intuition, um, what Christians may call, uh, in a sense, the Holy Spirit, when you act within that, um, it begins to purify you and bring you to this spiritual uh, truth. Uh, and like I said, there are many ways to come to this. Um, this is just one path that I'm describing here um, through, you know, Hinduism. But um, so, yeah, karma yoga, act right, do the right thing. Bhakti yoga, have faith in the divine. Uh, yana yoga, don't just accept the divine on blind faith. Actually try to understand it read and and find resources and talk with people and ask those difficult questions um, and then you will get an understanding and that's the path that I took to get to where I am now to where I'm feeling just better than I just more grounded and just uh, also feeling the positivity um, I've come to this because of yana yoga as one of my primary methods, trying to have a philosophical and knowledge understanding of how the divine can actually be real. And it was through that that I was able to conceive of the divine to such an extent that I had the faith, the bhakti yoga, to really just accept that I don't know everything. This Brandon Rowe false ego, body-mind illusion, will never understand on every single level. The, the ego can never understand the, the deepest levels of spiritual truth. Um, but, so next, you know, there, there's karma yoga, do the right thing. I mean, it, it's that simple. Uh, and if you watched the video to this point, um, you're, uh, I'm glad to hear that you have, because I know we've been through a lot of uh, really dense content in a way here. And I know that, you know, this is a lot of stuff that goes against what people commonly believe in our culture. Um, almost any culture in the world really struggles with 
with really recognizing non-duality because literally what non-duality means is that you are God. And this is something that some people with bipolar disorder say in like their first manic episode. Like me, I had the feeling, I have an old video where I said, you know, what, like I thought I was Jesus Christ and I gave the idea like, what if we're all Jesus Christ? Um, and going back in a much more complete way, I'm saying, yes, you're God, I'm God, but there's not a you or I. And it's not the limited self that you think, you know, is linked to that word you or I. Um, this is that divine self, uh, what in Hinduism is called the Atman. Um, a, a way that I kind of understand it right now, and, and this might develop more, and it probably will in the future as I understand more about uh, Hinduism and Advaita Vedanta, is that the Atman is essentially your higher self and your way um, when you're really operating at your highest level to to be that manifestation of Brahman of the infinite consciousness um, so yeah I just I'm I'm glad if you're watching to this point in the video and just just stick with me here I'm gonna be making more videos about non-duality more videos about bipolar disorder and healing it. More videos about how bipolar disorder is simply a spiritual awakening that hasn't um, been experienced in the healthiest way because you've got a lot of stuff to work through still. Um, and I realize that for some people, this video might not have had that much value because there are a lot of roadblocks to believing this stuff and to actually realizing it, testing it for yourself, and actually getting a taste of divine God consciousness. Um, this stuff sounds amazing and, and crazy and unbelievable because it's literally, that's how good it is. Um, you know, it's not going to come super easy all the time. So um, if I had to say one thing at the end of this video, I would say uh, look into meditation and start that um, to any extent. Um, you can look online. Um, the, the first way that I heard about meditation and really got into it was through a bipolar disorder uh, YouTuber uh, who rarely talked about his bipolar disorder, but uh, he has a very powerful YouTube channel, um, especially for those of us with bipolar disorder. Um, and his YouTube, he's Frank Yang, that's his name. And uh, he has also come to to change this what was a disorder and what had many strange behaviors to it he's 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 turned it into a search for non-duality so yeah thank you so much for watching again give the video a like comment if you have any questions or if you uh would like some resources from me i'm i might go ahead and include some resources uh in the description um that kind of explain this stuff, this non-duality, also the bipolar or, or waking up YouTube channel, all that. But um, yeah, so I've talked about all the stuff already. I've mentioned it. So if you're super interested, you can also Google it <laughs> um, or search it on YouTube and that will get you there. So I will see you in another video. Um, peace.